Happy Camper Radio starts in three, two, one. one, one, one. It's that time once again, and welcome everybody to Happy Camper Radio, the only place you need to be when you're ready to talk camping. Camping is what we're about. Camping is all we talk about. My name is Skip. They call me the Happy Camper, and for one very good reason, my job is to make a happy camper out of you. This is episode 117, and on today's show, I have a very interesting subject matter, a very important one, in fact. I think you're going to want to pay very careful attention to this, because this is something that can happen to anybody at any time, and it's happening more often than we care to know about. We're talking today about hot cars and dangerous temperatures. So many times we are hearing these days of people leaving their pets and their young children in a hot car, even with a window cracked, leaving to go inside of a store for just a couple of minutes, not stopping to realize just how hot and how dangerous the temperatures inside those vehicles are rising. And there was a couple tragic incidents here in the metro Atlanta area in recent weeks. And I'm going to be talking about those on today's show. You could probably relate to some similar situations that may have happened in your area. It's a very informative program today. I hope you stick around for it. Our phone number here at the Happy Camper Radio Show is 404 537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to Circles on Google+, and now subscribe on YouTube. There's so many different ways you can reach out to the Happy Camper Radio Show. Go to our homepage, www.happycamperradio.com. We have all of our social media icons located on the right-hand side of the page. A lot of useful information there, some safety tips. Take the studio tour and take a look at some of the photographs we have. A lot of things can be found right there at one convenient location. At this time, I'm going to head on over to the shout-out window and welcome some new folks who's logged on to social media this past week. Let's start by saying hello to Michael Tracker of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Andrew Jomei of Hangzhou, China. They like us on Facebook. Lake Tawakoni RV in West Tawakoni, Texas. Speak travel. Todd Dosenberry of Thailand. They're following us on Twitter. William Self, Snowbird RV Trails. Gary Wood of Hamilton, Montana, Rock Hounding Plus, Camper Van Hire in Stockport, Cheshire, UK, and finally to Dan Schuler, who subscribed to us on YouTube this past week. Thank you all so very much, each and every one of you. Glad to have you aboard, and thank you for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. Hey, would you like to be a guest on our program? I'd love to have you get in touch with me, Skip. S-K-I-P at HappyCamperRadio.com. If you have something you'd like to talk about in the world of camping, anything goes. Just get in touch with me, and we'll make that happen. Next week, folks, on the show, I am going to be doing my radio program from Georgia's Stone Mountain Park. I've been talking it up for the past several weeks, and I am going to finally make it happen. It is my commitment to go camping as part of the Great American Campout 2015. Just before logging on the show, I went and checked the numbers to see how many people have taken the pledge. And right now we're looking at about 80,000 plus people. The magic number is 100,000. For every person who signs up and makes the commitment to go camping, The National Wildlife Federation sponsors are going to donate $1 all the way up to $100,000 to benefit wildlife. It is something I beef up on the program each and every year. We take part in it, and next week I'm going to be doing my camp out, my camping trip, my pledge from Georgia's Stone Mountain Park. I hope to meet a lot of great people there, invite them over to my campsite, and be on the program. I also have some relatives coming in town, and I'm really, really excited about this. Now, here's one thing I should not have done this morning, but I did it anyway. I went and checked the weather forecast. You know and I know when we make long-term commitments to go camping, if we put in our reservations far in advance, there's always the likelihood it's going to rain while we are camping. 
That's just the way it is, folks. Fortunately, we're only looking next week here in the metro Atlanta area of a 30% chance of showers. One thing about camping in Georgia, folks, the weather here is so unpredictable. Things change at a moment's notice. Next weekend, it may be sunny. The temperatures may be perfect. It may be picture-perfect weather to go camping. I hope so. But where rain or shine, I am planning to go camping next weekend, and I'm going to be doing my radio show right there from the campsite. It's going to be an interesting program. I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, Even though I like the studio environment, I love coming into the studio to do this show. But nothing beats setting up my remote equipment out there at the campsite where I have folks that can come around and be a part of the Happy Camper Radio experience. So make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be episode 118 coming to you next week, the Happy Camper Radio Show. All right, folks, today it's about hot cars and dangerous temperatures. I don't like to talk about this. Unfortunately, this year, for some reason, we are seeing, I I almost want to say an epidemic. More and more people are leaving their children or their small pets inside of a vehicle to run inside to a store for just a moment and not stopping to realize just how dangerous of a situation that really is for their children and their pets. Heat stroke is the leading cause of non-crash vehicle-related deaths in this country, and they can happen anywhere, not necessarily at home, but out on the road and even out on camping trips. So each and every one of us have a responsibility to be mindful and to be paying very careful attention to what we're doing and knowing where our children and our pets are at all times. Have you ever left your child or a pet in a car before, not stopping to realize just how dangerous of a situation that is? And I'm not talking about just the hot temperatures. With people's cars being stolen today, Just last week I saw on the news, a woman pulls up in front of a convenience store. She has her young child in the car. She leaves the vehicle running and runs inside to pick up whatever. And the closed circuit cameras outside the convenience store capture this guy coming around the corner, jumping through the driver's side window and taking off with her child inside. She comes running out of the store, naturally, totally panicked. But, folks, this can happen. I know it may be a little inconvenient for you to take your child or your pet out of the vehicle as you have to step inside someplace. And, of course, we all know that pets are not always going to be welcome in some establishments, restaurants, for example. But this this is what can happen. So you got to be very careful anytime that you're out in your vehicle with your child or or your pet. You just don't realize the dangers that are involved, whether it be the hot temperatures inside the car or, like I just mentioned, the possibility of a car being stolen. Heat can rise inside of a parked vehicle in just a matter of minutes. And again, like I say, even with the window cracked, there is not going to be room for circulation, air circulation, inside that vehicle. And folks, the people who do this The first thing, no doubt, which is coming to some folks' minds who are hearing this on the news or reading it in the paper or or reading it on the Internet, wherever they're getting their news, they're probably saying to themselves, how stupid was that? Why would you do something like that? Folks, there are a lot of good, honest people with very good intentions who don't stop to realize the dangers involved And what can happen as a result of their actions? A lot of folks will say, hey, I was only going into the store for a minute. That's all I was going to be, uh, just a minute, and come back out to find out there is a very serious problem. Just this past week, the Douglas County Courthouse had a demonstration. Now, Douglas County is located just to the west of Atlanta, but somebody over there, very smart idea, decided to do a demonstration at the courthouse. And what they did is they parked a vehicle outside the courthouse. And on any given day, there's a lot of traffic coming in and out of the courthouse. It was hot and sunny that afternoon. And when they parked this vehicle outside, they parked it in a way where people coming and going 
would be able to take notice of it. They had a temperature gauge. Did you ever see one of these large, round temperature gauges that you park on a tree outside, maybe close to your window, so you can look outside and get an idea of what the temperatures are? Well, they had two of those. They had one sitting on top of the vehicle to get an idea of what the outside temperature was at that particular moment. And they also had a similar temperature gauge inside the vehicle with the windows rolled up. The inside temperature was 40 degrees hotter in direct sunlight and 22 degrees hotter when the vehicle was not parked in direct sunlight. It was a real eye-opener to area residents who were coming by, and a lot of folks didn't never stop to realize exactly how dangerous it is inside that vehicle with the windows rolled up. Can you imagine sitting in that vehicle, how long you would last? You have no water, you have no food, you have no way of getting out. Put yourself in the position of a young child or a small pet when they're in that type of environment. A lot of folks who do this, I don't believe, do it intentionally. Who would want to hurt their child? Who would want to hurt their pet? But these things do happen. Horror stories are turning up almost every day. Parents running errands, leaving the kids and the pets in the car, going to work, forgetting to drop the child off at daycare. Yes, this has happened. Forgetting to bring the dog inside after arriving home. We all love to take our pets with us. I have a dog here at the house, Harper the Wonder Dog. Wow, does he love to go for a ride. Let me walk down the stairs with my keys in hand. He hears those keys jingling. He's right by the door. His tail is wagging. He's all excited. He wants to go for a ride. And unfortunately, if I know I'm going to be going someplace where I'm going to be getting out of my vehicle and I cannot take him in with me, sadly, he has to stay home. I have on a number of occasions with not being in a hurry and without having anything really to do that day, I would take him for a ride around the block a couple times just to get it out of his system and bring him on home, put him in the house, and then go do what I had to do. Remember this, your dog, your pets are going to be just as happy to see you when you come home as if they were going out for a ride somewhere. Many of these events that I'm talking about, folks, have tragic consequences. This past week, there was a report on ABC News Nightline, and I was glued to the set, and I didn't even know it was coming up. But they did a report just to get an idea of what people's reactions would be in the event they come across a baby inside of a locked vehicle with the windows rolled up. I'm really happy they did this because it shows just how much people care and just how much people will get involved. What they did is they parked a vehicle along a busy strip of of businesses, and inside that vehicle, inside of a car seat, was a mechanical baby. They didn't use a, a, a live subject matter for this. The, the baby was mechanical. Uh, it was able to cry. The windows in this car were rolled up, and the baby, like I said, was programmed to cry periodically. You wouldn't believe how many people stopped and looked and saying, oh, my heavens, I can't believe somebody left their baby inside the car. Now, they did have some actors, uh, a guy coming out of the coffee shop. He's saying, hey, I'm only just, uh, I was only getting a cup of coffee. And, and people were dogging him out. In fact, there were some folks who got on the phone and called 911. I'm sure police and 911 were aware of this setup and exactly what was going to happen. But there were a lot of folks that were really upset about this and lecturing this guy and telling him, you don't do this under any circumstances. Do you realize how hot it is outside? You've got that baby inside. Your car is not running. The windows are rolled up. You know, you're putting your baby in a very, very dangerous situation. Uh, They didn't show any of the folks later on after they told them, uh, hey, this is all set up just to, to get an idea of what folks are doing. I am really surprised that nobody picked up a brick and broke the window. But this is what uh, a lot of folks are doing. Folks, people are taking note of these things that are happening. Now, bringing your pets to camp, have you ever brought your dog to camp before? I think if I had a dog at home and no other pets to take care of, because we are a multi-pet household here, I think I would probably be bringing my dog with me 
each and every time I go camping. But I would also make it a point that anywhere I went, the dog would be by my side. I would never leave a pet unattended at camp. In fact, you'll find out a lot of campgrounds, public and private campgrounds, will not allow you to leave a pet unattended at their campground while you go running out to the beach or to a museum or to an amusement park or wherever you want to go. You just don't do that. It's just as dangerous to leave a pet in a hot RV as it is a vehicle. Many campers love to venture out and visit attractions. I don't know too many people who sit idle. Uh, When I was much younger, I knew I was out and about doing quite a few things. But today, it's a different day and age for me. I like hanging around the camp, and there would be nothing wrong with me having the pet by my side and eating up all the food just like I would be, all right? So, you know, keep in mind, when you're out camping, you're always going to have some situations where you're going to want to venture away from camp. If you want to go hiking, that's fine. Your pet's going to love, will love to hike right along with you. But let's just say, you know, you want to go out to eat somewhere, you can't just bring your dog inside of a restaurant unless that is a service dog. Your dog is going to have to stay behind. So you're going to have to make some arrangements one way, shape, or form. Consider boarding your pet while you're on vacation. I know, for me, I I couldn't do that because I, I can't stop to think about what is going through my pet's mind if you're dropping him off and you're boarding him while you're on vacation. The dog may start to think, well, you know, is he ever going to come back for me? There are going to be situations where, you know, you're going to drop your pet off. If there's other pets there, well, their mind's going to be occupied with that. You can always ask a neighboring camper if they will watch your pet while you venture off and do something. I don't think I would do that, but let's keep in mind, too, campers are some of the most wonderful people in the world you will ever want to meet. And there will be some people just like myself who will be hanging around at camp. I think if somebody came to me and asked me if I would watch their pet while they went to a museum or they went to an amusement park, I would have no problem at all doing that because I'm an animal lover. And I think most people who do camp are animal lovers. I can't recall ever going to a public or a private campground where I didn't see lots of dogs on a leash. And people are very good about picking up after their pets, too. Now, while you're at camp, you want to keep your car doors locked and your windows cracked. Be mindful of children never to play inside of a vehicle. Always look twice before closing the trunk or the tailgate. Know where your children and pets are at all times. Again, folks, this is a very important subject matter. And just this past week, I went over a couple stories that really hit home for me, and one of the ones that that I want to focus on here happened a couple months ago, and you may have even heard about it because it made national news. It was in Oconee County, Georgia. It's a story about a dog who was locked inside of a hot car while the owner was in one of the shops, and it just so happened to be that One of the people who walked by and spotted this dog inside the car was a Desert Storm war vet, and he was there shopping along with his wife, who was uh, confined to a wheelchair for whatever reason, and they were the first people to spot this dog inside of this vehicle. The windows were up. It was a very hot, sunny afternoon. He saw the dog was in distress. Other people started showing up. And this war vet knew he had to do something. Somebody picked up the phone and called 911, but they were not going to wait for deputies to arrive on the scene to get that dog out of the car. What this war vet did is he took the leg off of his wife's wheelchair and he smashed out the window and got the dog out of the car. He immediately took the dog over to a shaded area and started hydrating the dog. He was giving the dog water. By the time deputies showed up, the owner showed up. And the owner was not very happy that somebody smashed the window out of her vehicle. In fact, from what reading the accounts, she was quite irate. She wanted this man arrested and prosecuted. She was pressing charges. The deputies, from, my, from what I understand, didn't want to have anything to do with that. Unfortunately, in this state, 
the law is not going to protect somebody who breaks out a window of a car to rescue a dog. They will protect them, from what I understand, if it is a small child. The laws definitely need to change. And I don't think it's just this state. I think there's several other states where lawmakers need to pay careful attention and start drafting some legislation that is going to protect people under the Good Samaritan Act if they see a dog, if they see a small child locked inside of a hot car. Moving fast forward, this man was arrested and he was charged. Uh, from what I understand, it's called criminal trespass here in Georgia if you damage somebody's property. Well, he was arrested, taken to jail, and a few days later, the woman who owned the car, the woman who pressed charges against this man, all of a sudden decided to drop the charges, and so did the local district attorney. From what this man was telling us and what his wife was saying in the, in the papers is their phones were ringing off the hook constantly. They were constantly getting knocks at the doors from reporters wanting to hear the story, and no doubt this woman was probably getting that same type of attention, and in her book, that was unwanted attention that she did not want or need. So and I'm just thinking here, folks, I'm not saying this is exactly what happened, but probably she said, hey, it's best to go ahead and drop the charges. Let's let this thing die. Something else occurred. Not only did they arrest the man at that scene for breaking the car window, and again, the only reason they arrested him was because this woman insisted on pressing charges. The deputies were not going to let her slide by as well. They contacted the local animal control officer who showed up at the scene, and that animal control officer cited her for leaving that dog inside the vehicle. I don't know what became of that. We're going back a few months now, folks, when this happened. It was in Oconee County, Georgia. And if you want to read up about it, just do a Google search on it. Oconee County, Georgia, dog locked in car. You'll find it. There are several stories right there on the particular subject matter. Also here in the metro Atlanta area, folks, and this was a very sad situation. This happened no more than a week and a half ago. Just to give you an idea of how people react you don't have you know you're not a bad person when you do this again sometimes because we have so much going on in our lives it's very easy to forget about the important things a local police officer coming home from work sick he is a canine officer he has a tracking bloodhound inside his vehicle he came home sick i don't know what was going through his mind but he arrives home early goes inside and he forgets his canine dog in the back of his vehicle. Five hours later, he comes out, finds the dog in his vehicle, and unfortunately, it was too late at that particular point. This vehicle is equipped with two alarms that will go off alerting the officer that the dog is inside the vehicle. Unfortunately, the vehicle has to be running in order for that alarm to be activated. And no doubt, that officer came home from work, he wasn't feeling good, his mind was somewhere else, and he got inside, and finally, five hours later, when things started to settle down a little bit, and he was able to collect his thoughts, immediately he started thinking about his dog. And when he came out and he found the dog, uh, it, was, it was too late, it was, he couldn't do anything about it. The media has gone out and they've interviewed the chief of police and he realizes that this was a tragic accident. Uh, there probably will be some disciplinary action involved here and maybe even some criminal action. It, it all depends on how they're going to deal with this. But it's a tragic situation, folks, and it can happen to anybody at any time. Do you realize the fast-paced world we're living in today? When you're driving down the road, your mind is on everything but what's important to you. you got to stop. You know, there's nothing more important than the safety of your loved ones, and that includes your children and your pets. So always, folks, take some time to pay attention to what you're doing. This is why I promote camping as much as I do, because it takes you away from that type of environment. I say leave the cell phones behind, leave all the electronic behinds, forget even that the world exists, even for just a moment. 
Two or three days away will do you wonders. Get yourself back on track. But again, if you do have small children and you do have small pets, especially this time of the year, right in the middle of summer, when things are really going wild and folks are out in the hot summer temperatures, you've got to pay extra careful attention as to where your children are, where your pets are at all times. I have some information on the Happy Camper Radio website, www.happycamperradio.com. If you're interested in looking at some safety tips and things you can do, I want to go ahead through a couple of them right now. First of all, you never want to leave a child unattended in a vehicle, even with the windows partially open, the engine running, or the air conditioning on. Always make it a habit to look inside the vehicle front and back before locking the doors and walking away. Ask a child care provider to call you immediately if the child does not show up for daycare as expected. Do things to serve as a reminder that a child is in the vehicle. Place a purse or your briefcase in the back seat to ensure no child is accidentally left behind. Write a note. Place it on the dashboard. Use a stuffed animal. Place it inside the driver's view to indicate that a child is in the car seat. Teach your children a vehicle is not a play area and store keys out of children's reach. And finally, if you see a child or a pet inside a locked vehicle unattended, get involved. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And this week, folks, I'm going to take you out to the state of Colorado to the Mountain Park Campground. It's part of the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest. Their season runs all the way through September 27th of 2015. Mountain Park Campground is located on the Cache La Pondre River, 40 miles northwest of Fort Collins, Colorado. It's a beautiful campsite. The campground offers single and double family sites and a group site that it can accommodate up to 75 people. There are 54 sites total. Sites 1 through 32 have electric hookups. Sites 33 through 54 do not. You can enjoy hiking, biking, and horseback riding trails in the area. Volleyball and tennis courts are available. A playground, horseshoe pits are also located at the campground. Other popular activities include birding and wildlife viewing. Lots of activities and amenities are right there on their homepage, and you can find them this week by going to our website, happycamperradio.com, and clicking on the Featured Campground tab. Some of the things you need to know before you go, very important, no RV water connections are available. Also, this is bear country. For bear and human safety, keep a clean campsite and do not place food and other attractants in your tent. If you're interested in firewood, guess what? You can gather firewood, dead wood inside the forest and bring them back to your campsite or you can purchase firewood right there from the campground host. But it's a great campground you may want to consider if visiting the state of Colorado this time of year. It's Mountain Park, Colorado, and it is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. And as always, if you have a campground that you would like for us to feature on the program, by all means, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. And make sure you include a link to the campground website. Well, folks, that's about all the time I have for today's show. Next week, I'll be talking to you from my campsite at Georgia's Stone Mountain Park. I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, thank you again for being with us. Don't forget, you can catch us online anytime at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to circles on Google+. And now subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. And yes, my folks, I'm going to do my best to make a happy camper out of you. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next weekend. This is Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio.